that was fun. This is Roy Candy from Epic Gaming Night, and I'm going to be interviewing Eric Lang. I, you may have heard of him before. I'm not quite sure. I definitely have not. I You haven't heard of him? Nope. Do you have any like games that people have heard about or anything like that? I'm not so. sure people know who you are. Well, so... Um, have you designed I, anything of note? That's what I'm wondering. Not really. Okay. I mean, the, so I'm one of those lucky... Um, one of those lucky stories where like the, um, a game company, a benevolent game company, they just found this poor street you. urchin. Like they, they took me off the street, mm -hmm. gave me a chance, yeah. and I'm like, I'm I'm doing my best, um, saying my prayers, eating my vitamins. Exactly. Now I got the largest arms in the world. So when we were starting this interview, I'm like, I'm putting Surge on the table because this is like a, a soda from the like the '90s. You never had Surge? I is have it, never. This, I've never even a, seen this you, before. They don't have Surge in Canada. No. Is that what it is? This I mean, this looks like if you drink it, so, you turn into the Incredible Hulk. So yeah, this is a drink that like it was on the market like back in the '90s, and like I think it like got taken down because so many parents are like, oh my gosh, it's too much caffeine for the kids. <laughs> so you're like basically that. trying to give me poison. Yeah, so exactly. I just want you to get hyped, man. You gotta okay. get excited. All right. Cool. So, um, did you get your tickets, by the way, for the gun show? <laughs> nice. No. All right. Um, do you have to like buy certain amounts of Simon product to get those tickets, or whatever? Is that part of the promo pack, or? Uh, it is now. You are a Done. marketing genius. Exactly. So, if you get enough tickets, how many tickets would that cost? Because I know you can get Finrear for two. One of every game that we produced since from 2015 to today gets you tickets to the Eric Lang gun two show. Two tickets to the gun show. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Two guns, double barrels. Sweet. Awesome, man. Well, can you tell us a little bit about your game, Victorian Masterminds? Uh, yes, I can. Cool. Would you do it? Yes, I will. All right. So, <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, unfortunately, um, uh, we didn't have it here at the show mm -hmm. um, because the, uh, the graphics are still under review, and that's all me. Uh, I'm... I'm kind of holding us up a gotcha. little bit. Um, so we don't have anything ready quite to show. But the game design has been done for the last two years. Awesome. Um, and so it's a game by Antoine Boza and myself. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bunch of in information on the internet already. It's all accurate still because we haven't changed the game. But cool. um, So picture it. Victorian England slash world with a dash of steampunk and a dash of mad science. Uh, science. So mm -hmm. Sherlock Holmes, gone disappeared yeah and you guys are playing all of the evil masterminds that he has been uh, has been chasing for his entire career and now you have free reign to spread mayhem across all the uh, uh, five in fact specific cities in the world no other oh, cities gotcha. just those five specific ones mm -hmm. and um, it's a game about that's a nice family game about getting points we call them mayhem points and you get points by <laughs> finishing your death contraption and capturing buildings and fulfilling missions only Evo missions, mustache twirlingly Evo missions. Oh, that's awesome. Missions. And so, I mean, it's, I mean, the, the game, the, it's lighthearted evil, mm -hmm. right? Like, it's kind of cartoony, but it's, we, um, it's based on a story that Antoine told me a couple uh, years ago at Gen Con, where... That he's um, an evil mastermind, or...? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, we just, <laughs> like, we were just, we, as doing design, as designers mm -hmm. do, we were sitting around, like, kind of just, you know, shooting the, um, at, uh, at, Gen Con, we're li and I remember at one point we we're talking about like game concepts that we like, and he told me this story, that story, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, that's a really cool game. Uh, like, what? Who's doing that game? He's like, oh, there's not a game yet. I'm like, yes, it is. It is right <laughs> now, and we're doing. We're it. making it together. Yeah, it is. So that yeah, so that's uh, it is basically what you would expect, I think, um, an Antoine Eric hybrid to look like. Gotcha. Is that kind of how most of your collaborations start? You just are hanging out with a designer and you're like, oh man, like we need to make this game together after like bouncing ideas off of each other? Or? Nope. That's the only that's one. That's the only one I that's mean, been like that? Everyone cool. is different. Every gotcha. single collaboration is different. Gotcha. That's awesome. Um, so are there any other Cool Mini or Not games that uh, are fresh off the shelves? I know I did a video for Gizmos and for, for Kick and all these other games. So Gizmos and Kick they're so fresh, they're not even out yet. Exactly. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, I have, right now, I have, because I've been uh, with Simon for the last year, mm -hmm. I, I totally have publisher brain. And I'm only, to me, it is now May 2019. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know what's out today. Gotcha. <laughs> um, I actually have to ask my, my, my poor people. Um, <laughs> which games can I talk about? Which, which games, games can I talk can about? I what's talk out about? now? Um, so, I mean, coming out very, very soon. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, uh, Gizmos and Kick. Uh, Song of Ice and Fire, which, funnily to my mind, has been out already for several oh, yeah, months. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, we've been working on it for so long. Mm -hmm. um, the official launch of Song of Ice Fire is going to be hopefully Q3 this year, somewhere around, around awesome. summer this year. Um, uh, we're going to be launching with the uh, with the core box from the Kickstarter, um, mm -hmm. and we're going to be launching spec constantly. Going to be launching new armies and new faction stuff. I'm I'm being very very vague here because I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about. Uh, we have a we have a product plan for a full year of stuff. Nice. Um, every SKU mapped out, designed, valve play tested. Like, what kind of do you know? What kind of like regularity that sort of stuff's come out? If there's yes, like, I do, but I don't know quarter. what gotcha. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about gotcha, it. Gotcha. Um, I mean, it's a miniature game, right? So if you are familiar with how miniature games generally get released, you're gonna have a pretty good idea of how we're rolling out. I just want to say, for me, mm -hmm. like I want some Song of Ice and Fire dragons. You don't say anything. Dragons. Um, undead and uh, giants, because I just like crazy monsters. You've got you've got Blood Rage Holy and Rising Sun. Spoiler like, alert, dude! I mean, come on, say what? Spoiler alert! Like, uh, not everybody knows they're dragons in Game of Thrones. So, are you serious? Okay, if you're buying the game, there are dragons and they dance. Yes, dancing dragons. So. Cool, cool. Super excited about that. I definitely want to check out. Um, do you know how like the the point buy system works for that? Like for building your armies? Yeah, I mean it's it's standard point buy, except gotcha. it's just but it's truncated, right? Okay. So instead of doing, we basically took the uh, a lot of the, um, st what, like like, I don't want to name names of other games, but like right, right. Um, games that games of fantasy and or science fiction that you may be familiar with mm -hmm. um, from the 80s, 90s, and even today, but just essentially rounded everything down by chopping off a couple decimal places. Gotcha. So um, you just, you buy you, you buy units and uh, leaders with from the same pool of points. And the leaders come with cards and stuff, right? They right, the deck. exactly right. And mm. so what the leaders do is they specifically edit your, uh, they edit the function of your units, right? And yeah. um, and your leader, your army leader, uh, changes the composition of your, uh, of your house deck. Mm. So depending on which house that you choose, that is going to provide uh, X number of cards to your deck. And I'm saying X because I want to be 100% mm. sure of, of my accuracy. Gotcha. I believe it's 10 and 5, um, but uh, things always change in last minute development. And um, so it, I believe it's 10 5. So 10 gotcha. cards of your house deck and 5 is your leader. And Michael's going to laugh at me for being wrong by one or two cards. <laughs> I are, see are, you, are you allowed to have like more than one leader, or is it just like you have this one leader? This is who leads your army, and that's how it goes out. Or? Well, you can uh, you choose which one of which, which oh, leader who, that you have. Oh, whose cards go in? Exactly right, and gotcha. so that you can only get one because cool. your your house deck must be exactly fifteen cards. When I played the game last year, that was one of the things I thought was super interesting was how the the intrigue plays in with the cards and trying to get the right locations to boost up your cards and things like that. So oh yeah, yeah. Fun. So that was that yeah that was the um, that's the the. I want to call it the board game element, but mm -hmm. that, I mean, we wanted to make sure that even though the game was, uh, it is a very, it's a fresh take on miniature games, like it's very streamlined, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we put most of the exceptions into cards, I wanted to make sure that we were, our approach was really fresh, and that we sort of crossed over into the board game side of the market too, right? Because yeah. we want to appeal, like a lot of people that are into Song of Ice and Fire may not be into miniature games, mm -hmm. they might be a little bit intimidated by it, so we wanted to make a game that has a set up with tons and tons of minis on the table, but is really, really accessible and um, easy to pilot. Yeah, and the other guys were saying that uh, the core set seems like it's like, you can keep that almost as a like complete experience, just playing with that. There's tons of different variety you can play I with think so. and things like that. I think so. I mean, my, so that can appeal to the board gamer side that's not going to be like, oh, I need to buy every faction out there, but I can start with this, and if you enjoy it, it's like, get another friend in on it, you can go in on all of this stuff. Absolutely. Cool, um, cool. You must have friends, though. Yeah. Kids, always have friends. If you don't have friends, make friends. That's right. Just be what, more you mean friendly. Construct friends. I mean, like golems, like golems and stuff. Okay. Use magic. I mean. Okay, we have a game about that. About constructing golems we and don't. magic. It's like shh, shh. We mean, NDA can't talk about alert. it. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Um, is there a specific game, because you've designed several games, is there a specific game that you would say that you played at a young age that like made you want to like start designing board games? Yeah. Uh -huh. What would you say that game is? <laughs> I am, I'm, you're not, I'm not giving you anything for free. So, um, <laughs> uh, Stratego. Gotcha. Stratego. So I played a lot of really like really bad games when mm -hmm. I was young, like bad mass market games, um, bad German mass market games. Uh, and it was when I discovered Stratego the first time, mm -hmm. and uh, like I mean, obviously I didn't have the vocabulary for this, right? But I was like, oh my god, secret unit deployment! Whoa! Yeah, boom, yeah, yeah. Hashtag mind blown, right? It was just fun to like be like, okay, I'm gonna 
surround my flag with bombs and like hope they don't go over here or some other different strategies and things like that. Yeah, I mean, well, I was just fascinated by the, the idea of like, oh my God, I know what this guy is, but you don't, <laughs> right? I mean, okay, I was like eight, so I was like, <laughs> right, but, but that was, yeah, that, that, that game, to this day, I'm still inspired by Stratego. That's crazy because that's also one of the games that I played as a kid that I really enjoyed. It's just, it's a game that I feel like could have inspired a lot of people in, Absolutely. in gaming. So. I, it is most people, I think it is most budding gamers' first introduction to bluffing. Yeah, I do like a favorite game Friday series and when we were like, oh, old school mass market games, what's your favorite one? I was like, Stratego, done. That's so, right. It's awesome. Cool, cool. Well, I'm going to do an interesting thing. We're going to do a meme review. Uh -oh. Are you ready? I, so, <laughs> I'm not ready. So, so I've got some Eric Lang memes. Oh my and god. And you've got to rate them in between 1 and 10. I'll have them pop up on the screen for everybody. Okay. Wait, can um, you wait? Uh, so I'm a game designer, right? So you, you, I need to I need some context here. I'm rating between 1 and 10, 10 being blank 10 and being, 1 being 10 blank. being how awesome you think it is okay. and 1 being if you're like Psh, that meme's no good, forget that meme. And you can just be silly with it or whatever. Whatever reasons you want. Okay. There's no cri you make the criteria on what you think is good or lame. All right. Can we go 1 to 5? Yes. Cuz 1 to 10 is too granular, sir. Okay. All right. Well, we can go 1 to 5. 5. Okay, this is the thing here. 5. This is that... like the starting I mean, meme th here. that baby is I mean so I mean I've seen that baby in other memes, but yeah, that yeah. baby is like if I had a kid, it would look like that. Exactly. I mean, I, I, I mean, who knows? Maybe I do have kids. You don't know. <laughs> but if I did, it would look exactly like that. Oh my God! You can tell I don't have kids because I said it. Blood rage. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Five. So, so five, five for the blood rage baby. Mm -hmm. All right. Batman meme with uh, can we play something besides blood rage? So I'm gonna say two. Two. Um, because, <laughs> because, <clears throat> first of all, um, it is almost a non sequitur. <laughs> like Batman's response to Robin is totally disproportionate and, <laughs> and not very humble. And secondly, Robin is asking to play Blood Rag, and I'm not a big fan of Blood Rag. <laughs> hey, that is a good call. <laughs> like I wouldn't be a fan of that game either. Good, <laughs> good times. Next, next meme. Excuse me. Do you have a moment to hear about our Lord and Savior? <laughs> okay, four. That's pretty cool. I just, uh, my favorite part, I love how happy that old lady is. Like, how many people are happy to get, like, that kind of a house guest? How would you not be happy if someone's bringing blood rage to your door? <laughs> She's like, uh, she, I, like, in her head, like, her inner monologue is like, I'm going to kick so much. <laughs> it's great. Nice. 4.5. Cool. This one's a little bit you have to know about blood rage to understand it. Oh, can you please explain so, that uh, to me? In, invade Yggdrasil with your entire army. This is like uh, Bad Luck Brian, so he always like gets misfortune in oh all of God. his memes. I didn't so, know that he had a name. <laughs> yeah, so he always has misfortune. No matter what's happening, he's got misfortune. Sure. So it's uh, like opponent plays Odin's Tide, so he invades with everything he's got, and somebody plays Odin's Tide and gets rid of all of his units. So, what, what's, that, your, what's your score? What do you think? I mean, it's pretty on the nose, I guess. Okay. Uh, it, uh, now that I know it's bad luck, Brian, I'm like, now I feel really sorry for him. It makes yeah. me a little sad inside. Brian never has any luck. I 2.2. 2.2? 2.2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. It doesn't make me happy. Nice. Here we go. What the heck is that? <laughs> this is, that's exactly what this meme is. It's like, what the crap, man? Um, when somebody plays Loki's Trickery and steals your last rage. This is the this is the face you make or the look you make. Did, like, somebody, on, <laughs> did somebody sew like a bleached grumpy cat beanie baby onto a squirrel? <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this meme. I have no clue. I'm gonna but I see it, it all over the place. It, okay, I'm gonna call, so it's, this is my first exposure to this creature. <laughs> Um, I'm, gonna call, I'm gonna call it a 3.2 for first exposure. Just the shock value of it in general? Yeah, but oh my god, like, like it, you can see the FIFA section scars on it. Like, oh, ugh, it's disturbing. <laughs> there you go. At least they stole my last rage. Awesome. And hey man, <laughs> me, hey, Eric Lang fan, actually a Loki strategy isn't broken. <laughs> okay, so. This needs a little context. I'm going to give this a four, only because that guy reminds me of Justin Trudeau, who is our prime minister. Yeah, there you go. And he's like, mm, actually, the Loki strategy isn't broken. And it go. just, um, for the Canadians among, the, among us, just say, that's the type of thing that Justin Trudeau would say in the middle of a conversation <laughs> without any other context. That's like, awesome. In fact, I'm going, to, I'm going to defend the Loki strategy to my friend, my fellow Canadians. Exactly. There you go. Four. All right, this one, I don't think we necessarily need a whole lot of context because it might be a little bit too much of a spoiler. Have you seen, we, we might skip 
Have you seen Infinity War? Oh, I have not. Uh, 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 Zero. Okay. Spoiler alert. Zero. Okay. Zero. Awesome. This is my favorite one. I saved it for oh last. Oh, my dear God. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is Eric Lang hiding from the floor because the floor is cubes. <laughs> score. What's your score, man? Blue. Blue. Blue is your score? On a rating of one to five, blue. <laughs> So I actually like, petitioned the uh, the Dice Tower uh, Facebook for them to give me their best Eric Lang memes. This is what they came up with. So I, I love that the the Photoshop head doesn't quite fit onto the other head. So it looks like it actually looks like it looks like a real life bad Photoshop. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it was uh, supposed to be good. I, I know, which it is it's disturbing. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's true. The floor is cubes. Nice. Now. What I would have said, now I'm going to develop this a little bit. Okay. I this wish. Is the meme 2.0. Right? It's a meme 2.215. Okay. Like, if there were more cubes, if, the, if I could see the cubes on them and I could see some of them turning into other cubes yeah. based on the actions of other people in the meme, now we're going to put some more stuff in there. Like, I'm just adding complexity, mm -hmm. but this is draft number two. Like later on, we're going to cut it back down to yeah. something elegant. I mean, you have to do your play testing and stuff like that. You have to do reiterations, and right. you got to do that with your memes, too. Right. Exactly. So I'll just say 2.2 .2 because I'm disturbed by the... By <laughs> the Photoshop? Like, like, <laughs> but, but on another scale, another axis, if you will, let's call it a 4.5 for creativity. I'm still disturbed, though. <laughs> nice. Is that Tom Vassell's hat? It should be. I, actually... It looks like the hat's photoshopped on, too, so it's probably Tom Vassell's hat. All right. Okay. 4.3. 4.3. Awesome. So I've been asking a whole bunch of people around the convention. I've been trying to do, like, a vlog thing, mm -hmm. and I've been asking everybody, out of their every Simon game there is, what miniature do you think best personifies, like, your personality, or do you think you best resonate with as far as miniatures go? Is and there a miniature that speaks to you? Oh, and you're like asking this me this question. Yeah, yeah for okay. you. All right. Is there a miniature that is like your miniature? Is like that's that's the Eric miniature. <laughs> there <laughs> is. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's for a game that's not out yet. Um, <gasps> so I know, I know, I know. So, okay. So I'm going to give you two answers. Okay. Um, for answer number one, um, it's going to be the sea serpent from Blood Rage, right? Nice. It's the hair, right? That is that guy. He's got end game hair. Mm -hmm. Like when when I get old and retire. That's what I want to look like. I would just want to. I want to come out of the sea and be like, "Roar!" I pillage like a boat. Right. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be me. Um, the, the the awesome thing about that is, uh, I have like a a sea serpent like on my arm, and uh, I had this tattoo way before Blood Rage ever came out, and I was like, I it's all like Viking and everything like that, and I painted my sea serpent for Blood Rage to match my tattoo on my arm. I'm like, it's gotta be green and orange like my arm. So that's that very really hipster funny. of you, sir. It was forever ago. It was way back before it was cool. Come yeah, on, man. Exactly. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I got a tattoo of the sea serpent. You probably wouldn't have heard of it, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, that's cool. That's a, that's really cool. Um, so, sea serpent for a miniature that exists. Mm -hmm. For one that doesn't exist is a miniature. I can do this without spoiling the game, but we have a game coming out in 2019 that we're already working on. But I saw the mini for it, and um, the code name I give this miniature is. It's, it's sort of modeled after one of our employees, Fel Barros, mm -hmm. who is our senior developer. We call it the mini Fel, and it it warms the, my cold, dead heart. Mm -hmm. Like when when he's like this. Oh, I no, you know what? I can't describe it because that'll spoil a little bit Shh, about the game. In India, India. Let's just say, <laughs> let's just say, uh, for for future posterity, that miniature took guts to make. I. I there's going to be a zinger there Tim. whenever anybody has any clue what that means. All right. Awesome, man. Well, this has been a lot of fun getting to talk to you, just having having silly fun. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this interview with Eric Lang. I'm sure you're doing all the serious ones later. I'm sure nobody's going to be having you review the, memes, right? This was, I, I consider this to be a very serious and professional and down-to-earth interview. Awesome, man. It gave me a surge of inspiration. Cool, cool. Well, make sure to check out all the other videos that we're doing to cover CMON Expo, and thanks so much for joining me. Thanks, Roy. Cool. Blood rage. <laughs> it was definitely different. Was it different? That was fun. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.
The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out more reviews and Favorite Game Friday from Epic Gaming Night. Also check out their weekly podcast and social media for more epic content.